Cranky Geek Fall 2022 is brought to you by Google, Spearline, Crisp, and Daily. For more information, see the links in the description. Hi everyone and welcome to Cranky Geek. This is our 2022 event and we're doing it virtual. The guys at Cranky Geek, there are three of us. My name is Sachi Levent Levy from Blogic Me and Spearline. We've we've got Chris Kernker at the back. He's the one dealing with all of the technical stuff. And with me is Chad. Hi, Chad. Hi, Chad. <laughs> so if you want to follow us, just follow us on Twitter with Cranky Geek. You can check the schedule on the Bitly link. And last thing before we actually start things here is that we've got our schedule. OK, we've got nine different sessions today. So we've got a long agenda with nine different sessions. After this welcome start session, we'll have the open source roundtable and a few uh, other things. We'll go over the agenda in a second. Just a quick thing about logistics. This is live, oh, yeah. if you've noticed, with all of the minor flanks that we've got here. Uh, you can stay on the live stream. You should stay on the live stream. There are going to be poll and discussions between the sessions that we're going to do, and there are going to be two scheduled breaks. So stay with us. You can type your questions into the YouTube chat, or you can say hi. I hope we'll have time to read that. So hi, everyone, and just continue being there with us. One last thing we, before we actually start, there's a subscribe button there on YouTube. Just click it. We want these numbers going up. A word to our sponsors. I'd like to thank you uh, and to thank our sponsors simply for making this event possible. Google, who's been with us throughout the road of Cranky Geek since 2014 or 15. This year, we'll also have with us Daily Crisp and Spearline. Without their help, this would have been possible. So I'd like to thank those sponsors at this opportunity. All right. Now, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about what we'll cover today. Uh, and to kick things off, I mean, I, I actually did an analysis recently of all GitHub events. And I have a methodology where I identify WebRC activity there based on keywords. And this lets me do things like identify users who are using uh, who are doing WebRC related things and developing code. So it, it probably no big surprise. Um, we had peak user activity back in April of 2020, the beginning of the pandemic. But the real question is, you know, how much of this peak could the, you know, the WebRC industry maintain? Uh, and the, the answer is around 20, around 60%. Um, but that still puts us, you know, well above where it was before the pandemic. But this is just looking at distinct users per month. Oops. If we take a look at, um, this picture looks very different if we look at distinct users actually doing some sort of contribution event, like pushing code or working on issues. And here we can still see that same pandemic peak you know, uh, in the spring of 2020. But uh, after that, there's actually steady growth uh, that keeps going up. Uh, and if you look, you know, actually WebRC is doing better than ever today. So what's going on here? Um, there's a smaller number of users uh, out there doing more things. What are, you know, what, what is it they're working on? That will actually be one of the questions we ask uh, of our WebRC open source roundtable. We've invited uh, leads from four major open source projects, Janus, Jitsi, MediaSoup, and Pion, to share insights on, you know, open source development uh, in WebRTC and, and what new things are happening. You'll also see you know, developers are working on improving the user experience. With everyone spending so much time in online meetings, user, expect user expectations are increasing. And I think it's safe to say every speaker we have here today uh, is you know, working on improving the user experience. But uh, Spearline in particular is going to talk about how to do this through better diagnostics. And that would be me. Yes, sorry. Um, and, you know, AI and ML, it actually is a topic we've been covering here at Cranky Geek for years. Uh, and these features and, and approaches have been penetrating RTC projects. So 
Today, uh, Chris will talk about um, performing audio ML and performant way in the browser. And the Google Meet team will talk through their approach to adding AI based features to Google Meet. Increasing user expectations are also pushing developers to like change or improve their approach uh, to even existing capabilities. Uh, and to that end, you know, for example, Daily will discuss how they improve rendering of live streams and recordings with a new cloud compositing approach. Uh, and Fippo from WebRC Hacks will talk about uh, new, better approaches for improving WebRC audio. Lastly, we're starting to see some of the kind of non-talking head, non-meeting type use cases of WebRC get some real traction. And in particular, like in the broadcasting industry, for example, we have uh, Sergio Murillo, uh, who's a you know IATF spec author, talk about two new WebRC-based standards, WIP and WEP, and how they apply that industry. Similarly, the unique name you know needs of game streaming are pushing the need for better approaches in that domain. So uh, NVIDIA will be joining us to talk about forward error correction advances uh, that they made for that use case. So by this point, if you haven't done already, here's your, your final reminder to please click that little subscribe button. It only takes a second. It helps us out. We appreciate that. And with that, we'll be back in just a minute to start our open source, uh, open source panel. Thank you to our sponsors, Google and WeberC.org, supporting web real-time communications. Spearline, guarantee a better customer experience by testing, monitoring, and benchmarking your voice and video communications. Crisp, Crisp's AI solution removes background noise and echo from meetings. Daily, build communications into any application.